Welcome. Today we're going to talk about the residues theorem. Uh, and so let's remember uh, what the res a residue is. So we can call a residue. A residue is at a value z equals z naught of a function. Is literally it's uh, it's Laurent uh, the coefficient of the of the Laurent series of b one, and this is also called c negative one, uh, and that's equal to one over two pi i integral for a contour enclosing z naught of f of z d z. Uh, and so what do we mean by a contour enclosing z naught? A simple closed contour like that around the point z naught. Okay, so it has to be um, any uh, contour. Uh, and, and so what we're talking about is it has to be able to uh, get uh, smaller and smaller around there and still retain the same value. So, uh, uh, so uh, and usually what, when we're studying this sort of residue, we're, z, z, z0 is a, a singular point uh, for, for, uh, for f of z. Okay. And so we want this to be an isolated point. Uh, and so if there's some other point, z2, obviously the contour, if it enclosed both of those points, uh, it wouldn't be the residue. What we have to do is limit ourselves to contours that only enclose that singular point. Okay, so if we take those ideas there, and so again, let's write down that what the Laurent series is. Oh, oops. Laurent series is the series f of z can now be represented as the sum of cn, n going from negative infinity to infinity of z minus z naught to the n power. And this, of course, goes in both directions. We have a c0, and that's just a constant value. Then we have a c1, and that's z minus z naught to the first power. But then we can also go the other direction of uh, 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 c negative 1, which is going to be z minus z naught to the negative 1 power. And it keeps going this way, and it keeps going that way for higher order terms in both directions. So it turns out this coefficient there is, of course, uh, incredibly important for, uh, um, for a lot of things in complex analysis. So uh, it turns out we're going to find out some really important results. So that's the, uh, that's the background in terms of Laurent series and, and what residues are that we've covered in previous sections. So now I want to talk to you about, OK, so we see here that this is a, a, you know, a contour integral. A contour integral just involving f, okay, um, and so uh, in general, you know, now if I start, start not with residues, but start with, you know, the goal, the simple goal of uh, of wanting to uh, compute the integral, integral of c over some contour of f of z dz, where the contour now is, in, is somewhere in the plane like this, and, you know, uh, where c encloses, uh, you know, a, a number of singularities. I should say a finite number. Okay, so what I have here is z1, z2, z3, z4, and so on and so forth like that. Some finite number. And so I can actually write those down as a sort of a set. z, k, from k going to, from 1 all the way to n, let's say. All right. Uh, and then so, and what we want then is that f is... Um, F is otherwise analytic. Otherwise. Okay, it turns out we have a theorem then that if I want to compute that integral, F of z, dz, it's equal to 
Uh, going back to this thing, it's, we can actually write it out as 2 pi i times uh, the sum of the residues at uh, k equals 1 to, to n, all the residues that are enclosed inside this contour, and the contour is of course positively oriented as usual, uh, residue of f evaluated it at z equals zk. Okay, so that's a really nice result. And that is what we call the residue theorem. Okay, so there's our residue theorem. So now let's, let's use this to compute some examples. But before we do that, actually, let's just go over a quick proof. And it's not much of a proof. It's just explaining uh, some things we already have before. So if I have this, um, uh, so in general, I have this contour, right, going around like that. And it's enclosing these uh, singularities. Um, then uh, what I want to do then is is uh, is uh, I'm going to draw a few few uh, a little bit fewer of those just to give my point. So I'm going around, and then I of course excise. I can always make it. You know, I can deform my path and create these little subpaths that enclose only that particular singularity. And the value of the contour is still the same. So C uh, then can be um, can be broken up into little bits. And then uh, so I can call that you know C. I can call this one C1, that one C2, C3, C4. So I can what I can say then is f of z dz around the big contour then can be equal to the sum. And this is the cauchy gorsat theorem, right? That's the cauchy gorsat theorem uh, from k equals 1 to 4 for this particular example. But in general, it can be to n, right? Integral around uh, ck, f of d, dz. The next thing I can do is then, uh, so expand uh, yeah, for each k, what I can do is uh, you know, have a Laurent series. And Laurent series then is going to be f of z is equal to the sum n equals uh, n going from negative infinity to infinity of c to the cn um, z minus z uh, k to the n power. All right. Um, so uh, so here's my result then. Of course, uh, and then now when I look at my contour integral c k, I can write that sum now. as follows, dz. And now uh, we, we know from before that I can take any integral as long, because it, over its domain of analyticity, okay? So uh, as, long as, uh, as long as my contour is in the domain of analyticity, which it certainly is, now I can always just put a little, a little, uh, little region around it and say, okay, I'm not gonna take my contour any further in. As long as I stay away from actually crossing that singularity, I'm okay. I can pass the sum through and compute CK on all the terms. Of course, we know that uh, if I look at that, it's going to be um, equal to zero if, if, uh, if K is equal to one, two, three, uh, four, uh, also zero as well, forever. And it's going to be equal to um, two pi i if n is equal to negative one. And we've, we've shown that time and again, that, that, that's, that, that, particular, that particular coefficient uh, associated with n minus one is the one that picks up a non-zero value around any simple closed contour. And then uh, it's equal to zero for n equal to negative two, negative three, negative four, and so on and so forth to negative infinity. So of course the answer for this will always be uh, just the value uh, two pi i times c negative one. Okay, all right. So if that's true for every one of these individual contours, of course then uh, the proof then is pretty straightforward. We're pretty much done at this point. We just actually add up the sum. 
All of those just yield these individual values for every k, so the answer in that, of course, is going to be uh, uh, 2 pi i residue uh, z equals zk of f, and the answer then is the residue 2 pi i times the residue from k equals 1 to n for the for the for the different residues uh, of f at z equals z k. Okay, so there's our result. Uh, that's the what we call the residue theorem. Uh, uh, and uh, so this now is a very constructive way to compute contour integrals in the plane. So let's do some examples of that. Um, so let's go to you know one of my favorite functions, which is f of z is equal to one over z. Uh, minus 1 and z minus i. Okay, so this is just the, the two prototypical uh, singularities in the plane. One is at 1 and the other one is at i. Okay, so let's, uh, and now I want to do a contour integral that, that encloses both of those. Okay, like, like so. Okay, uh, and then, um, so I can actually expand a Laurent series around both of these just fine. Or I can actually just compute the residues uh, by integration. So let's let's do the computation by integration. Of course, what I'm doing is then I'm going to go in there and integrate just around that one, and also integrate around that one by itself. All right. So what we get is the contour integral around this c here of f of z dz is going to be equal to um, now. These two individual contour integrals are called c1 of this function z minus 1, z minus i, dz, uh, plus integral ci, I'll call it, of z minus 1 and z minus i, dz. Okay, the next thing I can do is I'm going to take both of these then and, uh, and then refashion it in terms of Cauchy's integral formula. So what we have there is um, uh, c1. And now I'm going to look at what, so this function here, uh, z minus i by itself, that is analytic over the domain, while the z minus 1 is our singularity. Uh, and we simply have to do is um, evaluate then. This is going to be equal to 2 pi i times, uh, uh, that will be equal to the residue, which is going to be uh, uh, 1 minus i. So what I've done is actually taken the z there and evaluated it at our singularity. That's, of course, the answer. Likewise, I have here, for this, this value down here, I can integrate ci. I can put the 1 over z minus 1 in the numerator, z minus i, and use Cauchy's integral formula just like before, and that's going to be 2 pi i uh, uh, times... Uh, now I take my function and I, eva I evaluate this top function at i, so what I get is a i minus 1. All right, so the total result then is the sum of the two, which is 2 pi i of 1 over 1 minus i plus 1 i minus 1. Okay, so for this particular example, it turns out, of course, that this is the same thing as saying 2 pi i 1 over 1 minus i minus 1 over 1 minus i, okay? I'm just I just flip the sign here, like that. And of course, we can see that's equal to zero. Uh, and, and this, of course, enclosed both singularities here. So that's not always true that this will equal to zero. In this particular example, though, it is true. Now we're going to go into more detail as to why that's true, why, in this particular case, the two residues cancel. Um, uh, but we, we, can, uh, we can figure that out later. But we know that these functions are really important because, of course, transfer functions are typically of the form uh, 1, over, 1 over some polynomial. Uh, not always the case. Of course, if you have other more complicated transfer functions, you can have something in the numerator as well. And it turns out that numerator stuff will actually, if you have a more complicated numerator, you will get, uh, 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 if you enclose all of the singularities of the transfer function, you will yield a non-zero value. But in this particular case, you get zero. Okay, so, uh, so that gives us a nice result there. Um, so um, now let's, let's uh, so with that, I'd like to actually talk about, um, in, in later videos, what we're going to go through is um, uh, um, more, more details about when you're enclosing singularities. But 
Now let's go to another result. Let's, let's now do another example. I'm going to do this one where t of z is now going to have, um, uh, maybe it's a third order polynomial, so it has three like this. So it's going to have z minus one. I'll just pick some examples, z minus i and z uh, uh, minus, uh, we'll just go with, uh, we'll go two, okay? Here's my plane, have this one there. Yeah, one, I, and then also two. Right now, of course, if I, let's say I want to do this contour like that. So I'm only enclosing those two points. All right, so, um, so if, I, if that's my contour then, this is my function. Uh, I'll just write our T there, T of Z, DZ. What we have to do is find, uh, we can use Cauchy's integral formula, two pi I. Yeah, essentially, what, with this particular function, we're going to evaluate um, it at the points one and two. So uh, uh, for the first one, we'll just write down, it'll be um, equal to uh, a one minus i times uh, one minus two, plus, uh, and I can do this really quick in my head, uh, we're going to do um, uh, um, two minus i uh, and two minus one. Okay, so let's see what result I get from this. 2 pi i, and that becomes, um, uh, uh, so that becomes a negative 1, so that becomes uh, 1 minus i there. And then here we see we have a plus uh, 1 over 2 minus i. So well, we, we could do the complex arithmetic, but clearly this is non-zero. But in general, uh, um, uh, so we can find out whatever that is later on. But let's see then, um, uh, uh, so in the next videos we'll actually talk about what happens when we do enclose all of our contours. Uh, how do we compute those values? So clearly if, if we have a, um, a function with many many singularities, we have a lot of residues to compute. So it turns out when you enclose all the values, uh, there's, there's a simplified way of computing uh, uh, using the residue theorem for when you've enclosed all the singular values. But we'll get to that in the next video. So thank you very much.